Coming up on Eyewitness News, more local in the morning at 8, medical marijuana in Illinois continues to generate controversy. My local lawmakers are calling out Governor Quinn for keeping secrets. And could a state line representative be eyeing the White House? The move that suggests yes. Plus, breaking overnight, the Vikings make a 180 on their stance on Adrian Peterson. His agent's surprising comments on the move. Two stations. More local news. Eyewitness News. More local in the morning starts now. Good morning and happy Wednesday. I'm Evelyn Wilkerson. And I'm Kristen Sarner. Thanks for joining us here this morning. Not a bad start today. A little chilly out there. Uh, but overall, we're going to warm up quickly. So not That's a bad good. day. Yeah. That's definitely good. wanted the jacket this morning. We saw even yes. a few upper 30s again. Ooh. Not quite as bad as yesterday. But we saw them and it was a little chilly. Now much better. And that's because we're seeing a lot of clear skies out there. You can see that with the satellite and radar here. We saw some clouds move in overnight. But they quickly broke apart here this morning. And we're going to get a lot more sun. And again, that's allowing us to warm up here this afternoon and this morning, but temperatures right now still cool, 42 degrees here in the Rockford area. Actually, look at that, just bumped up to 47, so nice and comfortable here in Rockford. Still 41, though, in Rochelle, 42 degrees this morning in Freeport in Galena, now at 50. We will continue to warm up uh, rather quickly this afternoon, already being in the upper 60s as we look towards lunchtime and a high of 70 degrees today. Overall, high pressure still uh, impacting our area, and that will keep the first warm weather risk low. Uh, we'll see mostly sunny skies and no rain in the forecast for today, but you can always track the weather with our interactive radar. That is brought to you by We Follow Contracting, and you can find that at mystateline.com. Evelyn? Thanks, Kristen. It is 8.01, and here's what's new and now this morning. Reversing course, the Minnesota Vikings have made a 180 on their stance on star running back Adrian Peterson. The team announcing overnight that Peterson is being placed on their exempt list until his child abuse case is resolved. And that means he is banned from all team activities, including game day this Sunday and moving forward. And Peterson's agent released a statement saying, quote, this is the best possible outcome given the circumstances. Also overnight in the NFL, the, in, the league's player union has filed an appeal on behalf of Ray Rice. They argue the league already punished Rice, saying the new indefinite suspension violates his right to due process. The union's collective bargaining agreement requires a hearing within 10 days. A neutral arbitrator will determine what the NFL knew and when pertaining to Rice's punishment. And President Obama delves deeper into his plans to fight ISIS. With military advisors briefing him on the battle plans, the president will address the ISIS threat later this morning. The president continues to make one policy clear, no American boots on the ground. It's a sentiment echoed by other NATO countries. The administration has ruled out putting American military advisors in Syria, while Congress discusses whether to arm some moderate Syrian rebel groups. The governor and his Republican challenger are at it again. This time, the fight is over medical marijuana. Now, Bruce Rauner is attacking Governor Quinn for making the application process for medical marijuana cultivation centers secretive. And Eyewitness News' Phil Reed talked to local lawmakers who said the process should be more open to the public. It's been a week since businesses started applying for medical marijuana cultivation centers including one potentially at this site in Freeport. But there's already an uproar in Springfield. Republican nominee for governor Bruce Rauner is attacking Governor Pat Quinn for making the application process secretive. And local Republicans agree. If you're going to do it in this kind of process, it should be you know, open, it should be fair, it should be something that the public believes is above reproach. But it's not open. The Quad City Times found that the law bars the public release of applicant information. The bill sponsor told the paper that the confidentiality clause was designed so state officials who review applications will not be swayed by potential political connections. But Rauner fears the lack of transparency could lead to Quinn awarding cultivation licenses to associates with political ties. Some of his former employees that are now lobbying for uh, for these different facilities, the look certainly is a concern. Lack of transparency in, in Springfield is a chronic problem. We see it all the time. And I think uh, that, that folks have a right to know uh, what their government is doing and who, who these uh, people are that may be coming into their communities. Senator Tim Bivens represents both Lee and Stevenson counties. He fears the secrecy could hurt those counties' chances of landing a cultivation center. 
this goes on all too often. So, yeah, I think there, there's, uh, you know, definitely uh, can be an edge the way they're, the way they're uh, proceeding with it. Now, Renner also says he would have vetoed the medical marijuana law. And he also continues to hammer Pat Quinn for favoritism, both Renner and his running mate calling him corrupt for improper hiring within the Illinois Department of Transportation. Eyewitness News reporter Matt Porter is keeping you connected to the Capitol. Democrat Governor Pat Quinn continues to be embroiled in a hiring scandal at IDOT. Now, it's a controversial hiring process that began with former Governor Rob Blagojevich and was only revealed last month after the Inspector General released its report. The state investigation revealed people at IDOT were hired as staff assistants. These were initially characterized as policy positions and therefore allowed decisions on hiring to include political affiliations. However, people in these positions ended up doing more menial work unrelated to policy, and because of that, the inspector general said the state should not have bypassed normal merit-based hiring requirements to fill the positions. On paper, it looked like these were essentially policy positions when it turned out these were people that were doing basic kinds of things that would be covered by normally by the regular personnel code. And well, the report made it clear it did not find any willful breaking of the law from the governor, although his chief of staff, who helped oversee IDOT, resigned after the report. Now, the governor supports the new IDOT leadership's decision to restructure and eliminate the staff assistant position, but he does not support punishing the people for the previous leadership's mistakes. The governor also points out he actually sponsored the investigation shortly after he took office. From Springfield, I'm Matt Porter, keeping you connected to the Capitol. Freeport authorities and the FBI have been scouring the Pecatonica River in recent days. They say it's in search of evidence in a felony investigation, but they won't say much more. Eyewitness News is more local in Stevenson County, where police say the search for evidence is focused on an area where the Hancock Street Bridge crosses the Pecatonica River. The police are being fairly tight-lipped about the search, other than to say there is no danger to the public. They ask people to avoid the area since one lane of the bridge is closed. The search could last until Friday. Well, new signs on Tuesday night that state line Congressman Ryan, Paul Ryan is considering a run for the White House. The Janesville Republican is planning another visit to Iowa. It'll be the third time this election season. The Des Moines Register reports that Ryan will visit the Hawkeye State as a part of a Republican Party fundraiser next week. The former vice presidential candidate has not said whether he'll run. A recent poll of Iowans put him second in a crowded field of potential candidates. Now, turning to national news making headlines this morning, a man in New York is accused of aiding terror group ISIS in an alleged terror plot. Mufid Elfji was arrested earlier this year for allegedly planning, to a, planning a terrorist attack on U.S. soldiers and Muslims. And investigators say that Elfji brought guns, silencers, and ammunition from an FBI informant. And Elfji operated a convenience store in New York that was searched by the FBI. And we're learning more about what happened during the vocal cord procedure that ultimately resulted in Joan Rivers' death. According to a source close to the investigation, a staff member claims that Rivers' personal doctor took a selfie with the star while Rivers was sedated. The source says that the doctor then performed a biopsy on Rivers without her prior consent. And that's when investigators believe that Rivers' vocal cord swelled, leading to cardiac arrest. She died a week later. And UPS is going to make it a happy holiday for lots of people looking for work. This holiday season, the Parcel Delivery Service plans to hire up to 95,000 seasonal employees. And UPS hires thousands of temporary workers each year to help deal with the annual surge in package deliveries from October through January. And seasonal, seasonal workers will be paid at least $10 an hour to sort packages, load trucks, and assist drivers in making deliveries. UPS says that after the holiday season, many of the temporary jobs could become full-time positions. Well, it is 8.09, and coming up next, a look at our forecast. A very comfortable day in the forecast for today. In the last days of summer are upon us. Could we hit 80?